There we go. We are live. What's going on, everybody? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mid Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And today, I have this gentleman joining me. And who are you, gentlemen? Who, who are you? I, I am Paul Cornell, gentlemen. Awesome. Awesome. Paul Cornell. Oh, my gosh. I... Uh, be but behind the scenes, I was uh, geeking out with you a little bit about, oh my gosh, I can't remember what I fell in love with first. Was it your working comics? Was it the Doctor Who episodes? And I think they both happened around the same time, but I recognize the name and I'm like, that can't be the same guy. My favorite two episodes of Doctor Who. Oh, ever. thank you. I thank love, you. love, love, love those episodes, man. Uh, mm -hmm. My wife has a special place in her heart uh, for season one, the Father's Day episode from oh. 2005. Thank you. Uh, she uh, that was a she lost her dad in 2013, and it was really rough for her to rewatch those uh, when we went to rewatch Doctor Who because we happen to do that every few years. Uh, but man, human I've, nature and family of blood. I've I've heard that um, from people who've lost their fathers a, a lot, and that's the most rewarding thing. It's uh, to connect with with people through that has been tremendous. Um, my own my own dad was still alive when uh, when that went out, and um, he didn't realize at all that I'd based Pete Tyler on him. Um, oh. it, it, it was until I, I gave him a copy of the script book for Christmas one year, and he read it in my intro, and he went, "Oh, about that, he was so dodgy." He he, and, and I I pointed out to him all the biographical similarities, but there we are. But um, yeah, so thank thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Uh, absolutely. Oh my gosh! Like, so uh, when I heard that you were um, doing some stuff in comics, I got excited because I remember Human Nature and the Family of Blood. I was like, oh my gosh, by far best two episodes. Then along came this guy named Neil Gaiman who was trying to blow everybody else out of the water by writing an episode or two of Doctor Who. Now I'm like, nope. Human nature and family of blood still got it. Those are well, still. I went, I went in the other direction, you know. <laughs> Those are still the best. Um, so I do have to ask: How did your journey into comics, uh, novels, screenwriting? How did you get from here to here? And then we can talk about oh. the saucer country. Oh boy! Well, um, all starts with Doctor Who. Um, golden, golden thread throughout my career. Um, I mm -hmm. Doctor Who fan fiction. Uh, moving into uh, Doctor Who uh, comics and books and audio plays, and from there the TV show. And I got into comics because I pestered the editor of Doctor Who magazine to let me write a comic. And from there, some 2000 AD magazine stuff, and then a big gap before I, I got any American work. Mm -hmm. And that was because Mark Millar um, uh, saw my Doctor Who episode and emailed me and said, would you like to write for Marvel? So that's um, a, I, I recommend that as a tip to all aspiring comicers out there. All you need is for Mark Miller to invite you. Um, so, you know, just do that. Which, and, which, which episode was it that got Was it the, the I one think from... It, I think it was Human Nature. Um, oh, excellent. And... Um, yeah, so I mean, I mean, I, I, I hope my uh, my my irony is is evident there. I, I mean, I, I feel for aspiring comicers, and uh, I don't mean to disparage you. I'm, I'm disparaging my own lack of trying here, uh, my own good luck. Um, and um, so, uh, yeah, I, I've sort of spread myself out. I, I, I write SF and fantasy books, and uh, comics in all directions. Mm -hmm. And um, and t television when the whim takes me. Even games these days. If if anybody's got sock puppets or grand opera for me, I'll try that as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I yeah. finished a novel today, Omar. You finished um, a novel? Uh, yeah, I set it off. Is it um, Doctor Who related? No, 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 oh, no. Okay. It, it's a, a big SF novel, and the, the parts of my brain that were used to make a novel are now sort of looking around the room, going, "Wow." We got all this freedom. What do we do with these parts? Of the I'm sorry. I I'm a little a little no. punchy today. Yes. That's, a, that's a that is a huge milestone. You finished a novel. That's a big. I can't, I have been um, all day. Uh, the comics community uh, lost a great artist. Yeah, in, absolutely. In the, in the they did. Checo passed yeah, yeah, away. Yeah. 
And I feel like all day I've been writing a, this silly little, you know, rest in power thing. And I keep going back to it because the words cannot. Yeah. They're not coming. Right. We've, uh, we've lost a few just in the last um, couple yeah, of weeks. Sure. And so it, it it is an important time to remind people to thank those wonderful creators that we do uh, look at their work and it inspires us and uh, we love their work. So, you know, we thank them while they're still here. Am, like, am, I looking, no. am I looking a bit sort of sick and old? Is that what you're saying? No, no, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm saying, I'm going to take this well, time to say thank well, you. Thank well, you well, he's for, still here. Yes. for wisdom. <laughs> thank you for Captain Britain and the MI-13. Yes. Uh, no, but it's... Yeah. So oh, thank I you. Think thank you. Bad. I appreciate that. Absolutely, because you deserve it. That stuff is so underrated. And on my channel, every every year I do a like most wanted Marvel omnibus, most wanted uh, DC omnibus. And the one from the X-Men that always gets me, and I'm like, oh, and there are a few people that really enjoy it too, is that Captain um, Britain MI-13. I would love to see it. That, uh, you throw wisdom in there, you got yourself a pretty good big book. And and it's got an ending. Um, the, we we knew we were going to be cancelled with enough time to actually end the book properly. So I'm quite pleased about that. Well, how did that how did that come about then? Out of Secret Invasion, that they approach you, they were like, "Hey, we want to bring Captain Britain back." Um, I'd been. A, it's a nice process at Marvel. You get sort of headhunted, and then you get tried out on little things, mini series. Mm -hmm. and uh, Wisdom was my very first thing, uh, my very first American comic, and they seemed pleased enough with that, despite the fact that I had filled the panels with more speech bubbles than you had ever seen in the car. I'd, everybody does that first time out. Like, too many speech bubbles. And um, uh, then they asked me to move on to, to Cap, and... Um, we did we did really well initially we sold out um we did several editions of the first issue and um it was a kind of choppy time sales wise we we sold out of a late a really late issue but it, it wasn't enough to you know get comic shops to up their orders mm -hmm. um i i think yeah, you you put you you put uh a, a different nationality than where the majority of the comic spires are on the front cover of a comic, and that's always going to be a tough sell. <laughs> I, I, okay, I could see that. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I understand. But luckily for you, you were getting work at that time, left and right, as far as comics, right? And you were still doing your your own thing too, like because uh, you were I mean, doing screenplays I, and yeah, uh, novels. I, yeah, I, I was I was DC exclusive sh shortly after that, and um, the other the other uh, I would love to see a lovely hardcover of Knight and Squire. Um, that um, it, it's the most British book on earth, and <laughs> it's um, we we invented me and Jimmy Broxton invented a hundred new British DC universe heroes and villains across the course of it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you did some work at uh, DC, and that's that's honestly where Saucer Country started. Like yeah. it, it started over at Vertigo. Yeah, because because I I got to talk to Karen Berger, the great Karen Berger, oh, uh, yes. and uh, visited her in her office at the height of her power. And um, yeah, um, it took doing to to pitch her. Uh, a UFO book, but we we got there, and um, it was a delight to work for her, and then later Will Dennis, and um, yeah, uh, really really loved my time at Vertigo, and um, and, and we got to fourteen issues there before sales failed us, and then it was taken up by IDW, but IDW only got through half of what we planned as the ending. Mm -hmm. and left us on a cliffhanger and so um chris ryle had left idw at that point and he's our editor emeritus in this mm -hmm. uh, conclusion this continuation of the source of country source of state book uh so he's been supporting us all along and um yeah it's been a, 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 a 10 years almost exactly it, it's taken so um a little behind the scenes for people that aren't aware of things that are published like through vertigo as the creator 
um, because you were able to take it with you to IDW. Did they give you a hundred percent of the characters? Is that how it worked? Rather, rather wonderfully. Um, DC um, were just very humane about it and gave me my rights back before 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 I I took it. Oh, uh, wow. uh, I know. Um, it doesn't seem to have happened with anybody else. I think I just had a really, a really nice chat with the person involved. I, I'm not sure. But um, no, we, we, we took our rights with us when we left. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I know. Because sometimes, I mean, there's sometimes there's little things that people, you know, yes, you can have these characters, but this kind of belongs to us. Oh, you wrote a story with these characters. So, I mean, licensing is always a pain in the butt, I think, for anybody that not... Okay, it's a pain in the butt for, me, for everybody. I'll, I'll be honest, Paul, because not just for the creator, but also the fans that want these books incomplete, but also the publishers who have to deal with, oh, well, we can't use that story because it featured that character. That character belongs to this toy company or this character belongs to this particular publisher. And you can't have a complete collection of this. So I think works like Vertigo work, well, they tend to work really well because they don't really impact the DC universe. Yeah. So I think it's really cool, man. I, I think it's awesome. And and now, tell me about this. Um, by the way, I, I, I forgot to thank him earlier, but thank you to Jordan uh, for putting all this together. He's a big uh, New Warriors fan too. So he, he knew how to... How to get my attention? Oh. <laughs> so, well, I, I should I should talk a little about the book itself. I, I've sort of yeah. skipped straight past the. No, the, no, no. Go ahead. Um, Saucer Country is the story of um, Arcadia Alvarado, the governor of New Mexico, who's mm -hmm. about to announce her presidential bid when she gets abducted by aliens, and um, it's like this. Um, and and she decides to use her presidential bid. And the office of the presidency to uh, find out what happened to her and why. So it's kind of like the staff of the West Wing are forced to do the X Files, and uh, she's surrounded by a fun group of uh, eccentrics who um, explore the, the wonderfully colourful and varied world of UFO mythology, which I've been steeped in since my youth. And um, I, it's a terrific. Uh, just wonderland of fashions and extremity and, um, and it changes so much and um, it, it's it, it's one of America's great exports it's like jazz it's a purely American um, mythology that you export to the world and um, uh, I've always been fascinated by it anyway um, we managed 14 issues of that at Vertigo and six mm -hmm. more at IDW and I realized I could finish this and answer all the questions absolutely satisfactorily and tie everything up in a little bow. We're not doing an X-Files here. We're going to answer all our questions in one final chapter. And that's what we're doing. We're putting together everything and an ending drawn by the original artist, the incredible Ryan Kelly, who's yeah. fabulous character acting, amazing monsters and weirdness. And um, uh, doing the complete story. That's why it's called the completed Saucer Country. And for those who've been following along already, who've bought all the issues, it wouldn't be fair to make them buy... Uh, it, this is an enormous, um, over 400-page softback collection. It'll go very well on those shelves of yours. And um, uh, we didn't think it was fair to ask those who'd bought every issue to buy the whole huge collection just to get the ending. So we're offering the ending separately as well. Um, so if you've been a loyal reader up to now, you're rewarded for that, not punished for it. So you can you have an option of getting the book, the completed Saucer Country, and the finale comic? Is yeah. that right? Okay. Yeah, separately. And uh, and there's all sorts of other options about, you know, uh, do you want it signed? Do you want it digital? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, yeah, so, it's, it's my first crowdfunding. I'm very anxious. I, yeah, you're, okay, first of all, you, uh, you're doing really well. It's doing really well. Two days in, and you guys, it's a great book. I had the Vertigo. No, I might have had the IDW trains when they were starting to print the Vertigo stuff. 
so then I have a couple questions for you. Let's go back to this. Uh, number one, uh, just to clarify, is the finale included in the completed Saucer Country? Yes. Okay, it's so it's already, it's already in there. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. Uh, number two, this is this is kind of a question where I like to it's where the creators don't know how to answer this sometimes, but why not a hardcover? Um, hardcover, I think, sends the costs up too high. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, Zoop and I talked about this, and okay, Zoop are really, really good at this. They've, um, mm -hmm. a lot of the content on the um, website is theirs. They've come up with some wonderful videos, and um, they're really supportive and they understand the project. And I think maybe it's about postage or something like that, that a, a, a hardcover sends your costs up too high. But you, you'd need to talk to one of one of the Zoop guys about that. Um, I'm going like, I'm, I'm to talk to Jordan next time hmm. about this. Um, it, and it is a question that I ask every creator uh, that comes on here with uh, crowdfunding. And I mean, anywhere from uh, Mark Silvestri, I, well, he was behind the scenes when I asked him, why not oversize hardcover? And that's just a preference by him. He's like, I don't like oversized. It needs to be standard size like a comic book. And I'm like, okay, oh. you're Mark Silvestri. You can say whatever you want to. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll, I'm always curious what uh, some of the decisions, how they're made, whether it's a costly thing, whether it was way too much. Um, by the way, we have some people that have already backed it here. Thank you all so much. And Adam, thank you. Uh, I do remember Ryan Kelly self-published comics. Thank you so much for sending that to me. Here is the link, and I will also put it in the link of the description if you want uh, to help fund this book, I help help this amazing human being here that just finished writing his no his. How many novels have you written, Paul? Oh, um. Uh, it, it depends if you count Doctor Who ones or not. I think um, four non and about eight Doctor Who. I'm, I'm just looking at the comments for the first time. Oh, wow. Bless them. Um, Stormwatch, Bernie Summerfield. We've got a Bernie Summerfield fan on here. Wow. Hello. <laughs> and um, Look at that. Of them. I think Paul, for one of my favorite Who companions, Benny, <laughs> yeah. for my favorite Who novel, Human Nature, which is my favorite Doctor Who episode. It's brilliant. Oh, um, so, you. yeah, Stormwatch. We haven't talked about that. See, we're going back to comics. What? Uh, yeah, tell me about uh, this. Is when you were at DC, right? Yeah, DC? tough experience. Um, I, I was, I was. My, my new, new fifty two was very mixed. I, um, I loved being on Demon Knights, and I loved my, my run on action comics before the New Fifty Two. It was one of the, my favorite things I've ever done. I, I Matt Idelson, the editor mm -hmm. on those, one of the great editors, um, just uh, incredibly relaxed in demeanor, uh, but incredibly precise and very good. And um, but uh, Stormwatch, um, I was doing Demon Knights and Stormwatch for the New Fifty Two. And it got so choppy. Uh, the books were meant to be uh, affiliated. Um, and we tried to work towards that. Demon Knights was meant to mean Daemonite in Knights from Stormwatch. Uh, except that link was never made, along with a bunch of other links. And um, I, I swiftly got... Uh, found myself not being able to keep up with the... Um, the the way things change so much on Stormwatch, and um, I I I quit. Um, I really didn't want to quit Demon Knights, and thankfully um, nobody made me. But um, yeah, um, tough times, tough times. And uh, oh, thank you for those who like my action comics. Cheers. Um, I, I miss writing Lex Luthor. He's one of my favorite characters to write. You gave us uh, the black ring. I remember yeah, that. Oh, yeah. uh, oh, that was that was towards that weird end of DC before Flashpoint and New Fifty Two, and it was still like an interesting time for a lot of because we didn't know we had no idea Superman was going to get rebooted and become this young guy again, and well, yeah. then eventually go back to rebirth and merge with young guy, old guy. We but, um we uh, they asked me um do you actually want to continue action comics after Lex Luthor? I was like, yeah, I want to write Superman. 
and, uh, and you know, it was only four issues before they they ended the the run. So I was quite pleased to do write the last issue of of action in the old continuity. Um, but you know, all at the time we were all very enthusiastic about the new fifty two. Um, I loved the fact that there were war books in there and western books. Um, we all thought that this was going to be a real opportunity to sort of broaden comics out and get a bigger audience and it swiftly became evident that that was not the case and um you know i i still think it was a noble experiment that um you know didn't really didn't really land um oh i i really appreciate that david c um your third time of buying saucer country that's delightful Bless you. I, I'm sorry, I'm both talking to you and responding to the comments. I should no, 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 no. We're all here for you. So, Ryan, Ryan you, Wilson, you, I'm surprised I wasn't asked to write Hellblazer 2. I would have loved to. It is my I, destiny okay. to write John Constantine. Damn so, it. Wait, wait, what did you call him? John Constantine. Thank you. Boy, we get into arguments here when it's the John Constantine and John oh. Constantine folks. And I always thought, okay, well, John Constantine's the way American, us the colonists have called him. John Constantine might be the way that I hate to say it, but you know, I might say it either way on any given day. It's <laughs> <laughs> no, it's your fault. It's your fault. Okay, so I've always made a joke on my channel. Like, I feel like the prerequisite to writing Hellblazer is you have to be from the UK. Yes. Right? And that's that's the prerequisite. Like you, I'm sorry, you you're from New or, York. Or, you can't or, write Hellblazer or or Ireland, um, oh. or, or or perhaps Australia, Eddie Campbell. But um, it's um, uh, I, I think it's 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 a character. I've I've just always felt such an affinity for that character, and I really really want to. How did that um, happen? Like you were there at New Fifty Two. Well, they had who was it? Was it Lemire? Well, no, he had him in uh, the Justice League Dark, but he had his own series for a while. Yeah, I was. Um, I, I I got close to. I mean, I was just at the wrong age to be uh, in that sort of stew of Vertigo people um, in London, and. Um, uh, but I still think one day I'll write John. I'm not going to say his surname now. I'm, uh, I'm. I still think. I still think that this is my destiny because he's he's one of the last of the characters I've always wanted to write that uh, I haven't. You wrote Wolverine. I did. Character horribly. I was very bad at that. <laughs> now, now, Paul. <laughs> But you were also given the time of Wolverine when he was like, "Hey, we're going to kill this character off." Um, Write a story, my... like. <laughs> well, you see, I... you're, you're at the tail end of these things with like uh, New Fifty Two around the corner, and then Death of Wolverine around the corner. I cancelled my own comic, Omar. I um, I I I came up with the idea of making him killable uh, because I thought, I oh, remember we'll, that. We'll we'll get years of stories out of that. And as soon as I did that, they decided to kill him. Of course, they did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you can look at that time though, back and and, and mm. laugh about it because at the, at the time, you know, a lot of writers uh, sometimes characters click with them. Sometimes you're given yeah. a project and it's just not for you. I um, spent two years wrestling with 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 Wolverine and he never suited me to be honest and um I I was just the wrong writer for that title I should I should have realized it sooner honestly because man you were you you're a hell of a writer when it came to wisdom for anybody who hasn't read wisdom uh stormwatch and I'm sorry it wasn't a good experience um or or captain britain and it's not because he's British, uh, just because it's such a damn good book that I always try to push on people. But S Saucer Country, there we go. That's New Mexico. Yeah, and I I went on tour around New Mexico to do research for it. it it's set in New Mexico because that's sort of uh, both um, space industry and ufology central. It's where so many of the important things in both have happened. And I, I don't think that's a coincidence. The fact that Roswell is downrange from the White Sands Missile Range 
not a coincidence at all. And um, it, it, it's, you know, um, but me and my wife drove around it and I kept saying, oh, over there is where Patrolman Louisa Moore encountered a, a craft which we now might assume was the um, Apollo lunar lander being uh, flown around in secret. But to him, he was very sure that was a, an alien craft. And uh, quite often my wife would say, can we, can we not stop in this out of the way place where you say something extraordinary happened? And, um, but uh, so, yeah, I, I, I really love New Mexico as well. It's a brilliantly atmospheric and resonant state. I, I think it's, uh, it's really cool that a lot of writers uh, do that too, like go and actually visit these places to write about. Uh, because I guess we live in the age of the internet that you can just Google. What is living in New Mexico like? Hot, humid, got it. I can write that. Well, um, um, it's Mel cool that you drove there. Melinda Snodgrass, who lives there, gave mm -hmm. me a tour and sort of well, also introduced me to some more of the weirdness of the place. And um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm again seeing the comments. Um, <laughs> it's okay, we'll go, we'll go back to the... <laughs> the um, uh, yeah, uh, and um, what, what sort of country and sort of state are about is uh, they kind of include a, a, a history, a, um, all of the, uh, of the UFO law across time. We, we go from George Adamski meeting um, his Venusians in the desert in their wonderfully classic flying saucers, um, through uh, the Hopkins Kellyville goblins, little green men, the greys, the lizard men, um, Serpo, um, close encounters. Uh, guest stars in the comic include uh, Philip K. Dick and Vladimir Putin. Because um, this is the other, this is the other thing. We we kind of guessed right in 2012 about where some stuff was going, and right at the heart of com the comic is Russian meddling in American elections, and um, so there's landing it now. And being able to actually complete that arc feels tremendously satisfying. And oh. yeah, um, oh. uh, there are the nature of aliens in the comic is is debatable, but there are definitely some real aliens by the end. I was going to ask, going back and revisiting a story like that, uh, even though it, a little time has passed, is it like going back home, like riding a bike, like yeah, hey, I got this. Kinda. Um, you get the characters' I, voices down immediately. I've some of them. Um, I I I always knew what the ending was going to be, so that was just about landing it. Mm -hmm. But um, th there are there are characters who I miss. I miss writing Pete Wisdom, and uh, I miss Lex Luthor, and uh, I, I missed Chloe, the Republican um, speechwriter from Saucer Country, who's immensely cynical. And tells hard truths to our Democrat uh, presidential candidate. And w one of my favorite lines I've ever written is from her: "Only poor people get abducted by aliens." I have so many questions. This is such a fun uh, conversation. Uh, okay, cheers. Uh, so before we move on to the next question, though, I do have to give you praise because you were also one of the few writers that I remember. Uh, that wrote Young Avengers in between that Alan Heinberg break. Um, Heinberg created, co-created, I'm sorry, with Jim Chung, the Young Avengers. And then there was nothing because, well, television. And, you know, he, he gets paid more for that. And from time to time, he would try to come back, and it just didn't, never worked until the Children's Crusade. So I was really happy to see you sh uh, come in there. there were, you were in, uh, there was an issue that you did. I think it was Vision in the yeah. Young Avengers Presents. And then you did the dark Young Avengers story arc, yeah, uh, which was amazing. And, and, no, and nobody really praises those, but you know what? Those are now collected in the omnibus. You're welcome, everybody, because I was I suggested to Marvel that they put them in there because I feel like that's an important part of the story that should be collected in there. Well, the Young Avengers I, presents and the dark Aven Young Avengers story. I I think my um my um different. Enchantress in there is the reason I get yeah. named at the end of the Loki credits. But um, 
it's not her, so I'm not sure what else that can be about. But um, maybe maybe me, me being named there is in itself a spoiler. But if, if so, it's a spoiler for me as well. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who told you about that? How do you find out about those things? Um, oh, somebody, you know, somebody on Twitter will tell you pretty much immediately anything that happens to you. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Somebody on the internet already found out before you did. All right. Oh, hey, uh, Del Boy's Retro Zone, which classic artist would I love to? Busemas, man. Busemas. Any Busema. Um, I'm, I'm a huge Bronze Age fan. And, um, there's, there's something so satisfying about the Busemas work, about the, the shape of their pages. I, I think the older I get, the more I've learned to appreciate Big John and, and Sal. And Sal was... <sighs> You know, Sal was a big artist when I was uh, collecting comics in the 80s and 90s. John was uh, doing a lot of superhero stuff, but John loved Conan. Like, that's what he wanted to draw. My, my favorite uh, combination, and this is down to Steve Gerber, who I worship, um, is um, uh, Busima with colon inks. There's something almost... Oh, Ernie Colon, yeah. Yeah, there's something almost... In, impenetrably absurd about Busima Ink by Colon. Um, the, um, I associate that with the Bozo's issues of Defenders and uh, that, that wonderfully dead pad of humor. And um, I, I think that's just delicious. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me let me uh, go back a little bit here. You mentioned Australia. So Tom Ta that covers Tom Taylor. Who, uh, oh, Brian Azzarello. You're right. I forgot about Brian. Yeah, Nazarelle did have a run. Yeah, he might have made some kind of deal with somebody. Well, I like I wasn't the person who said that um, only no, that British was, people that could write. Be, <laughs> <laughs> always been a joke. Um, I was mad when when they did give you the yeah, you had to write everything <laughs> leading up to the death of Wolverine. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of like oh, and and um, um, but you know, I was actually. It was more of a surrender on my part. It was like, oh, God, just take him off my hands. <laughs> I uh, bought Saucer Country while it came out. I just realized Saucer State is a thing. Yeah, a lot of people, we shouldn't have changed the title when it went to IDW. Silly thing for us to do. Um, okay. I um, That's why they, the, the collected final volume, uh, the collected volume has got everything in it um, of anything to do with the story and it's back to being called Saucer Country and it's got an ending now. So um, <laughs> you can hop past Saucer State and get the new one and it's got that in it too. And uh, I did put the link in the description of the video, but I'll also put it in the comments section if people want to click on it. All right, wait a minute. Didn't that guy say he actually saw aliens though? I don't know who, who you're talking about, Mir or uh, Paul, because I saw a UFO <laughs> when I was a kid. And I don't know about Paul. Do you have a story? I suspect he's talking about Patrolman Louis Zamora, who okay. um, who, who only saw only saw a craft. What did, what was your UFO? I've never seen anything. I've always wanted to. Oh my gosh! Um, this this happened when I was probably six years old, and it was uh, I, I'm originally from Lima, Peru, and we were at a birthday party, uh, and. My brother remembers this too, and it's funny because he's younger than I am, and we never talked about it. And we lived in front of a, like a giant cornfield for just miles, and we we were at this little birthday party, and everybody's looking outside, and we're looking out into the cornfield, and in the cornfield you see what is the stereotypical, not a cool like triangle shape saucer or you know spaceship or anything from star wars but it's your stereotypical like saucer and it's landing and all i remember thinking was oh, man this is gonna suck because i had just seen they had done a marathon of like the day the year or so still world of the worlds all those movies on television i had watched them for the first time at six years old so i thought oh we're going to get killed. And, but, but then, like, it just kind of disappeared out into the field, and we went back inside to the party, and we never really – I don't know. I was sick, so I'm sure the adults were like, what the hell was that? <laughs> like, That's what... tremendous. Have you ever talked to any of those adults about it? 
No, I wouldn't even know how to talk to them. We oh. moved here in uh, 1987, and I guess if I was six, I was probably 84, 83. So, yeah, I wouldn't even know who those adults are. Just my brother and I were the ones that actually know these things or, or actually uh, have talked about it. But So I find that uh, stories about UFOs really interesting, yeah. especially like uh, – so many documentaries and stuff on on stuff like that. Pretty interesting. So many people um, have experiences like that where they seem to sort of step outside what they their reactions might be expected to be for a moment. Mm. And um, uh, I'm I'm not a believer. I'm I'm not a skeptic either. I I I think skeptics are too harsh on people who've experienced this stuff. I I um I don't think anybody is lying. Uh, very, very few people. I think um, a lot of I think a lot of people are um, mistaken, but mm -hmm. um, it, and it, it but it would be in your case very hard to be mistaken. Well, I think there's always an explanation for things, right? Like whether mm. it's the supernatural or whether it's UFOs. Uh, one of the things that was out there in the field, though, like because it was literally a few miles from us. Um, it, there was also a military base out there. Mm, that's um, interesting. And, so, and South America is interesting too, but please go on. Well, yeah, South America, you know, the Nazca lines. Like, why did people draw that? Like, it makes no sense because you couldn't see them from... You know, we, this has turned into a really interesting... Topic. Yeah. No, I, I, I mean because uh, one of the threads through Saucer Country is the mm -hmm. idea that the U.S. intelligence community has always encouraged the, the UFO mythology and uh, used it in so many different ways and uh one of the things that they definitely did was um uh what was it used a helicopter to uh and some hallucinogens to pretty much convince somebody in chile i think that they had had an alien experience and uh when you say experience you mean alien abduction or you mean uh, i mean having sex with a female alien in his case <laughs> um, I don't mean... <laughs> but um, <laughs> the, think, um man who was it that said only poor people get abducted yeah yeah <laughs> um but one of your you know, the, the cia is definitely not above doing sorcery well, things in south america or right or 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 anywhere really but mm. uh so yeah that was that was my really quick experience with that uh with that no, nothing else supernatural thank goodness or or ufo related um and i haven't talked about it with anybody really outside of my brother wow. i'm 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 fascinated i mean it's um that must be so wonderful to have that as a childhood memory it's uh it's interesting, right? It's definitely because uh, I mean, we, 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 it's it's a uh, it's not quite third world, but we considered ourselves poor, and it was just an interesting thing that happened that while we were living there, and talking about it as adults, we were like, why didn't we go investigate? Like everybody in movies goes and investigates. Oh, an alien ship is landing. Let's find out what's happening. Nope, we all went back inside of the uh, birthday party, including yeah. the adults. This 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 uh, this odd reaction is is something that happens a lot. It, right. It's I, I think I think perhaps people, if they see something outside of their context, you know, they actually don't quite know how to behave, and um, it's um, something that looks impossible. I I wonder if uh, something that looked very impossible might not actually be ignored a lot. Hmm. Um, but anyway, anyway, I digress. <laughs> it's okay. Let me uh, let me look through some comments here. Your comics adaptation of the Sleeper in Wildcards was amazing. Oh, thank you, thank you. Only just finished that. Um, uh, we've just done four um, four issues of George R. R. Martin and Melinda Snodgrass's Wild Cards at Marvel, and we're adapting the very start. So thank you very much. Uh, you're getting a lot of praise here, Paul. It, look, people it. even like your Wolverine. Uh, will we ever see you working at DC again? It felt like I always felt like you should be given a long run on a series. I would love to see your talents back at DC. Thank you. I would love to work for them again. Um, 
you know, I, I, I chat to the odd editor every now and then. I am, I am, I would not turn it down. And um, there are there are quite a few DC characters I would like to uh, like to work with. Um, so you know, I, I every now and then I will I will try my hand. And let's see. Thank you. Uh, this is for your answer about which classic artist you would uh, love to have worked with. Um, that's right. He's a big fan of John Romita Sr. Oh, yeah. My goodness. Uh, uh, I, I'm, um, I, I love Romita Sr. Um, I, I love Ditko on Doctor Strange. I actually prefer Romita on Spider-Man. And uh, I, I think he brings a glamour and a coolness to it, which really makes it zing in the 60s. He definitely made his uh, Peter Parker uh, a little more attractive, too. Oh, he goes from being complete nerd to movie star in one issue, basically. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a good-looking dude by the time John yeah. Romita shows up. Yeah. I was like, there's no way that's the same guy that took his glasses off and all of a sudden he's like that hot. But yeah. hey, whatever. <laughs> um, let me see here. There's a... Uh, I'd planned to get the HCs of whatever Wolverine epic you were going to do. From the outside, it looked like you were building up to Wolverine's death and then they yanked it from you. Did they... <laughs> point did they tell you hey paul by the way we're killing wolverine like uh when did this happen oh this was um about uh i don't know about um six or seven months from the end of my run um and it was inspired by the fact i've made him killable and um i i would say yanked i mean um you know uh i uh, who's to say what their thought processes were? I, I'm not. Um, I, I very. Uh, I, I very. I very much. Um, I, I don't. I don't want to be that old comica guy who's always talking about how um, they ruined his comic or they took it away from him or whatever. You know, it's all August to the mill. I, I see. I see Raphael in the comments. Um, yeah, talking about Louis Zamora, I recall now. Um, I think maybe they were NASA personnel. I'm sorry. I, I, I think those people in coveralls might just have been human beings. Because um, the um, Lunar Lander was definitely being thrown around by helicopter in that area at that time. And um, I think... Um, uh, you know, if you and it was also top secret at that point. You didn't know; nobody knew what uh, the Apollo lunar lander looked like. So you got that thing fly, or it might have even been flying through the air. I mean, uh, they were doing uh, full lunar lander flight tests, like the flying bedstead. So if you've got the Apollo lunar lander, which you've never seen before, coming flying horizontally at you with a couple of people in white coveralls walking beside it. And you've never seen any of this stuff. I mean, what, what are you gonna think? <laughs> uh, okay, as a writer, do you see another writer's story and think how you would have handled that story? That is a Some, good question. Yeah, it is sometimes. Um, and movies, especially. My wife says, uh, I, I, I'm hellish when we see a movie, I'm like, um. Uh, if it, if it's really good, it switches off my ability to to pick it apart. Um, I'm I'm half of a podcast, Hammer House of Podcasts. We watch all the um, Hammer horror movies in release order, and um, that's, we that's awesome. And uh, we we're, oh, doing it gives it such context. But basically, that allows me to do by picking apart of the shape of a movie uh, on a monthly basis, and. Um, uh, I'm I'm terrible with that. I will always say, but if you just took that bit there and put it there, or and uh, yeah, so with movies, I'm doing it all the damn time. <laughs> um, so do you do you, okay? And I guess uh, not just in comics, but do you do that in um, movies and TV shows? Do you go oh, like if, for example, like Doctor Who? Let's oh. go back to that. When you're watching well, Doctor Who, after your episodes aired, your two-parter, where, um, to see, like, the character that you wrote, like, come back and 
Hey, how did that feel? Like, did, did you know that was going to happen? Yeah, I, I knew about it somewhat, just a little bit before. And um, yeah, it's so wonderful. I This is my favorite feeling to have contributed to a universe and for one's contribution to prosper. Um, because all shared universes are based on what's useful for the next person. And if you create something that lots and lots of other people build on, like with Bernie Summerfield, that's a great feeling. And mm -hmm. every now and then, like, um, people have kept, uh, further writers have kept me, um, I, I gave Captain Britain his powers based on confidence, and they've kept that going. And that's that's pleasing. And um, so, yeah, watching Pete Tyler come back in Doctor Who was brilliant. And... Uh, you know, you just like to see your contributions uh, recognised. Oh, just in the most recent Doctor Who, I loved the fact that the um, uh, story of uh, Ace and the Seventh Doctor parting was taken from one of my books. And um, seeing that on that represented on screen was really flattering. I, I emailed Chris Chibnall and said, oh, was it? And he replied, yes, yes, absolutely. So, Dude, that's, well, hey. that's awesome. I, yeah. I, have, I need to catch up with Doctor Who because... I know we have a big three-parter coming out that I'm very excited. My wife yelled. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I'm very excited for that. And, and Donna, oh, my gosh. Um, let's see here. Were you a fan of Marvel UK back in that was, oh. okay? I was about to ask about 2000 AD and and Marvel UK. Like, yeah, is that, I, I, was that your I, first taste in comics? I, I, I was. Um, I um, I've gotten to know Des a bit recently, and um, the uh, his Starburst magazine was really important to me, and I loved the Captain Britain, the Black Knight strip in Hulk comic drawn by um, oh uh, John Stokes amongst other people, and. Um, yeah, hugely. Um, uh, uh, I'm uh, there's uh, I I would near I would nearly got into uh, the you remember back in the nineties when Marvel UK did a huge number of books like uh, Death's Head and things like that that were. Oh, well, I very... remember. I absolutely remember that. Oh my gosh, I love. Uh, sorry, my wife just. Uh, no, no, you can peek in here. No, no. It's Paul. I told him about my UFO story. You can come and say hi. She's a big fan of Doctor Who. Oh, hello. Oh. Hello. hello. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for uh, joining my husband. Oh, interview. you're welcome. I, I, I gather you're a Christopher Eccleston and David Tennant person. Yeah. <laughs> That's how <I'm> really <laughs> <laughs> um, But yeah. Uh, I should get I my wife here. We met through Doctor Who. Um, she was a, a Doctor Who fan, um, and uh, I was at a party with another Doctor Who writer, and uh, she came along. And uh... Oh, that's awesome. That's so sweet. Oh, that's cool. Well, my husband and I, we have an agreement we kill each other if we hurt the TARDIS, because we're not sharing. Yeah, okay, we're not sharing the Doctor <laughs> as companions. <laughs> I'm the companion. No, I am. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sharing the Doctor. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm seeing any Doctor just sort of sitting there going, oh. <laughs> these two. <laughs> uh, so, no, just uh, she was over here trying to whisper something, and I was like, just, Oh, I thought you were doing a one on one, and I said, Dinner's ready. <laughs> Oh no! I was doing the interview with Paul Cornell. I'm sorry. Yeah, you did this ready, Omar. I mean, uh... oh no. <laughs> okay. Okay, baby. Thank it's you. It's white chili. Oh, okay. Wow. Thank you. It was, it was nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Hey. <laughs> uh, so, so you, yeah, you guys, you guys had the big Hulk magazine over there, which were yeah. printed in black and yeah. white. Those honestly, some of those stories have been collected in collected editions, but not all of them. And people keep asking about those. So yes, I was a big fan of the big '90s push of Marvel. That was the I first would... time I saw like Liam Sharp's artwork. Yeah, oh, Liam was great there, uh, and Liam, I love Liam's work. Um, uh, it, I, I, I nearly got into that. I was nearly in it. Um, I um, was, I think, one issue away from starting to write for Marvel in, at that point, and um, then they pulled the whole line. Um, but I, I, I see. Um, uh, let me see. I see Jordan Plosky from Zoop in the uh, comments. Hey, Hello, Jordan. hi Jordan. Thank you again, uh, Jordan, for putting this together. Um, somebody asked which podcast that was. Hammer House of Podcasts, which you can find anywhere that you find podcasts. It's, it's generally available. 
and um, uh, da, da, um, <laughs> did, did, did you go through this too? As a kid, I was always yes. colored and black. I colored and black. in everything. I cut, uh, but my very first comic was um, Avengers Weekly. British Avengers Weekly, which had uh, issue four of the Avengers in the front and some scary Ditko Doctor Strange in the back. And I colored the hell out of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we have to ask, I, I have to ask about this. Because in the UK, there was this amazing Death's Head, Doctor Who, Transformers. All in mm. like one comic. One universe. Wow. Um, the... Um, because uh, uh, Death's Head, let me see if I've got this right, uh, starts off in the Transformers universe being as big as a Transformer. Yeah, he's a big bounty hunter. And he gets shrunk down to his current size by Doctor Who oh, okay. in a Doctor Who comic strip. Which <laughs> has never been collected. Like, I have the Death Surprisingly. Like, <laughs> I have the Transformer comics. And again, licensing hell because they can't reprint the issue where Doctor That's, Who shows up. That said, can't talk about his past very much. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that character, so I had to ask about that one. I remember that that being just this big, like all these characters together in one book. Yeah. I, uh, I should I should reassure Jordan. We've talked a lot about Saucer Country, Jordan. It's okay. We I mean, we we're, we're now talking about dinner and, uh, and it's so much. So I shared my story about actually seeing a UFO. He saw uh, a flying saucer. I did. I yeah. did. Uh, but Paul, according to Paul, uh, either the CIA hypnotized me or um, I'm crazy. I didn't say that. But then again, I was misquoted for saying that I think only Brits should be writing. Hellblazer. Then I forgot about Brian Azzarello. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, Brian Azzarello's Hellblazer was great. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, um, so uh, I think we've covered all aspects of Saucer Country, Jordan. Um, oh, hello. Except for, one, except for the one question you, did, you said I should post to Jordan about... What would it take to make a hardcover? Why not a why not a hardcover in this particular uh, campaign? And that's a question I think maybe Jordan and I can talk about. Uh, thanks for your answer. I'm in the UK, Oxfordshire. I love the Hammer podcast. Hammer was used a lot in Oxfordshire. I met Peter Cushing. Oh my gosh, and I miss him. Matt at work. Peter Cushing. Wow. Uh, my my co-host Lisbeth Miles is in love with Peter Cushing, and um, it, it's. Um, uh, I, I'm, I think he's amazing. Um, I uh, I would love to have met him. So, oh my gosh. Yeah, I think most people probably are familiar with him because of Star Wars here in America. Yeah. Uh, he, 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 towards the end of an enormous career. And uh, he's Van Helsing to Christopher Lee's Dracula, amongst other. And yeah. he's an amazing Frankenstein. The best Frankenstein by a mile. But... Um, um, I'm just thinking if there's anything about Saucer Country we haven't covered. Um, it's um, we got about 28 more days on the campaign. Mm -hmm. So um, what I'm expecting here is that um, we will continue at our current amazing rate. We're about 70% funded after two days. Um, so I'm thinking we'll continue at our current amazing level of, of uh, speed of funding. And that will exponentially slow as we approach day 30 until we got just 10 cents left on the very last minute. And I'll, I'll just throw in 10 cents and we'll cross them. No, actually, I think we'll have lots of uh, cash for uh, stretch goals. And there are some there are some Doctor Who related stretch goals where go I'm going to write a piece of fan fiction with Saucer Country and Doctor Who character, my Doctor Who characters in it, if, I, if we get to a certain point. How have you not pitched this one? An evening with Paul Cornell where you could just talk to you about Doctor Who yeah. and UFOs? Which that's one of our, what we're doing here. That's one of our add-ons. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe, sorry, Jordan. Am I giving away an add-on free here? Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah. <laughs> this has been a blast. And oh, I enjoyed it. Any character that you would love to go and uh, right for the big two that you never got a chance that you were like we talked we did we did talk about John Constantine or Constantine yes but what um what would you like to write like what would Paul Cornell if if given the chance at DC and Marvel who, who, what characters would you like to write um 
DC, I'd love to do the Marvel family, Shazam. Um, uh, I'm, uh, I, I think there are so many opportunities to do exciting stuff with them. Um, mm -hmm. And um, uh, Marvel, oh, and I'd love to get back to Superman, actually. I, I, I really love Bendis' Superman. And uh, I think I think a um, a ethical, straight shooting, uh, seriously good Superman uh, is just a tremendous figure, especially right now. And you know, all you have to do is show how hard it is to be that guy. I I don't think that's dull. I think that's interesting. And. Um, it, the uh, so yeah, Superman. I, I would love to get back to, and um, Marvel. Oh, there's lots. Uh, uh, I, um, I always wanted to do a bit of. Uh, I mean, there's not a vacancy in a lot of these places. I always wanted to do a bit of Thor, but um, honestly, Thor's been done so well in recent years. Um, I. Um, I'm a huge fan of the work of Al Ewing. I, I, I would same. The Hulk would boggle me. I think he's the hardest character to write, and Al's done so well with him. Um, again, I like Cosmic. I'd like to do Adam Adam Warlock. Um, I'd like to um, to work on the, uh, the the Cosmic end of Marvel. It's Guardians um, of the Galaxy. Yeah, one. yeah, I like the Guardians a lot. Um, I I I incline towards Grandeur being a seven a Bronze Age kid. Um, um, and uh, I like their puncturing of the grandeur, but maybe it's time to do some grandeur again. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, yeah, uh, some people are asking. Uh, yeah, Ryan Green Lantern. I, I, Green Lantern. I there's just so much Green Lantern lore. I mean, I wouldn't mind doing Legion of Superheroes, but where do you start? I mean, there's you start over from scratch, Paul, just like everybody else does. You take your. <laughs> I, I I would re I would need to take a degree in the Legion of Superheroes before. Um, I I think um, yeah I I, I thought but, but okay uh, Adam I thought Trev and Manuel both did great on Wisdom. Um, Trev injured his hand, um, oh. it, and so Manuel took over because I think Trev got a spike through his hand, and it uh, it slowed him down a lot. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, Oh, okay. Jordan is on, uh, is answering. Uh, Jordan is on top of that. Uh, yeah, the, you, you can either get the the, fin the Saucer Country finale as a floppy, mm -hmm. or you can get it as part of the um, whole collected edition of the completed Saucer Country, of which it is a part. Yeah, I think we talked uh, we talked a little bit about that earlier because I, really? I I wanted to double check and make sure I clarified it for people that are watching. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah, hurt his hand, huh? Yeah. I guess it puts a damper on your work if this is if you draw for a living or hell even write for a living. Well, so he's, the text can even can only get you so far. Yeah, he's recovered hugely now. I mean, he's once, yeah. once more drawing away, and he's wonderful. Um, was, was it Howard uh, Porter? I remember when he broke his hand. It was a uh, it was rough for him coming yeah. back. God, yes. It, I mean, you must have to relearn a few things. I think. Mm -hmm. um, would I be Doctor Who showrunner if I had the chance? Like, yes, of course. Wouldn't? <laughs> wouldn't would, any, any, would, is there anyone who wouldn't? I ask myself. An awful. I feel job. like it's, that's such a huge task because you're like, I think with 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 something that big, right? It's like it's like Wolverine. Like, I can't believe I just compared Wolverine to Doctor Who, but hear me Both out. Regenerate, I guess. <laughs> they do. They do, uh, and Wolverine can get silly at times, depending on who's writing uh, his regeneration skills. Well, but... I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about your run, uh, but the the character is just so big, expectations are so high. That is such a level of, I would believe, stress mm. on the writer, because you're not gonna, and you have to learn, and you you, I'm sure you know, you can't please everybody. Yeah. You and the, the, it, it's it's a it, it's a good way to you have to write so much and so fast that you just uh, reveal every tiny corner of yourself to the audience and um, who are fiercely critical. So you know, I I but still, yeah, I take it. 
um, I'd take it um, for uh, six weeks, do two episodes, and then go. <laughs> Get the best of all possible worlds. <laughs> you you <laughs> got a mental breakdown between. <laughs> breakdown and check yourself in somewhere. Do you have a Doctor uh, Do you have a Doctor Who showrunner in your wish list if chance came? Uh, to be oh yeah you you answered the second question but do you have a showrunner in your wish list like somebody to take over Doctor Who oh I see oh right um, you answered the second question and, okay and yeah I um let me see who would be who would be great um I well there's a, a lot of British writers I I could name who probably um wouldn't mean much to uh, I think there's a British writer called Sally Wainwright I think she'd be a, a wonderful fit um. And uh, oh, Brian Azzarello. <laughs> well, he ought to have a go, <laughs> eh? Um. <laughs> Taking their jobs. Oh my gosh. Um, I think you know, doing that job would have to be stressful. My goodness, these the folks that have taken that role. Woo! More power to them. Oh, um, to answer Del Boy, um, we do uh, for our patrons an extra episode every month in which we watch what they ask us to watch, which are either Hammer non-horror movies, and we've done one about on the buses, and um, uh, ho horror movies from the same era. And what is the uh, name of that podcast again, sir? Hammer House of Podcast. And uh, Ryan, uh, anything I've got coming out in the future? Um, well, uh, ne early next year, I've got uh, from TKO a comic, uh, a graphic novel called Witches of World War II, which is historical fiction about a bunch of um, uh, magicians uh, in Britain during the Second World War, Al Alistair Crowley and all. And uh, I take them on an unhistorical adventure into occupied Europe. But apart from that, it's very true to real life. And we, we had... Um, a, a, research advice from um organizations who you know are set up to curate their legacies and uh, you know people who actually met some of these guys and um so that that's been a lovely experience um so yeah um and, and uh, there's I've, I've got two other comics things i can't announce yet and uh, there's always something going on i love i love hearing that you man i you do have a lot of thank you, Nathan, uh, for the super chat. Black Ring, best effing Lex Luthor oh, story ever. Thank best you. Best Blackest Night story. I read it every year. Thank you so much. See, man, you are so loved around these parts. Uh, I'm big fan of your Captain Britain MI13. I'm pushing for that omnibus one day. We got to oh, include wisdom in there. And that would be lovely. And yeah, I think uh, I know it's late for you. So I do want to take this time to thank you for joining us. And thank you so much. I've had a wonderful time. And thank you to everyone in the comments. Um, I'm, I'm about to drive off to the Thought Bubble Convention in Harrogate tomorrow morning. So um, you, be, you be careful and get some good rest. And yes, thank, thank you for the best episodes of Doctor Who. I don't care who else comes around thank and you. tries to knock you off of that. Oh. And can I just say, finishing Source of Country is so important to me. It's a project of my heart. Please have a look at the page and see if there's anything that appeals to you. That would be so nice. Thank you. I um I have a question, one more question to kind of wrap this up. And I was going to see if if you don't know if, if uh, Jordan is still here. Uh, but, yes, I am leaving a link in the description of the video uh, for the, uh, the, the uh, Zoop uh, where you can go and get Saucer Country. But... Is this going to be available? <laughs> That's my wife saying. My our daughter says you look like the doctor. That's very flattering, depending on the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, is this going to be available for retailers, or is it only through Kickstarter, or is there a certain tier that you're gonna, you guys are gonna be able to push this the diamond or? There's a retailer tier. Um, you can um, get uh, three copies at a discount price um, mm -hmm. in, as, as a retailer. Awesome. I love hearing that because we have a couple sponsors that would probably pick this up and uh, sell through their shop. So Wonderful. Uh, thank you. So thank you so much for being here. And thank you, Jordan, for putting this together. Paul Cornell. 
man, I've, I've loved your stuff for years, so it's been a pleasure getting to finally talk to you. Anytime, Omar. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it tremendously. And thank you, everybody. It's been lovely to meet you all. And, and if you ever want to come back and talk about UFOs and Doctor Who, dude, I'm here for that. I tell you what, next time I've got a comment coming out, I'd love to come back. See, see you again, I hope. Okay, you got yourself a deal. We and any t it doesn't even have to be a uh, collected edition. I'll make that uh, exception for you only, uh, just because I like talking about UFOs and Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> Love to your wife. Have a nice oh, dinner. Well, thank you, and thank you everybody for joining us. Have a wonderful evening and.